Hello, I'm Neil Quigley and welcome to the latest episode of my blogcast. Hope you're well and you've had a good couple of weeks. I have mentioned this many times before, but I'm not the biggest film watcher in the world. I don't watch that many films, certainly at the cinema and generally throughout a 12-month period. It's a very low amount. Part of this, I think, is due to the fact if I'm going to commit to anything over an hour I have to really want to do that thing, therefore really want to watch that film to invest that sort of time in. Over the years, there have been films that I've gone to the cinema to see by myself alone because I wanted to see them straight away as soon as they came out and there was nobody else available. Films that fall into that category are simply The Simpsons movie, the Alan Partridge movie and every single Star Wars film. If you're ever trying to convince me to see a film, you will have a lot more chance if A, it's a comedy, it's about music or about sport in some way. Action films, you've got half a chance of convincing me to go and see them. Anything else, a bit more of a lottery, to be honest. Anyway, a couple of weekends ago, my girlfriend and I couldn't really work out what we wanted to do. I think there were train strikes on once again, which kind of limited where we could get to. And we're both having one of those weekends where we were finding it hard to just decide ultimately what we wanted to do, where we wanted to go. She has a very decent cinema not far from where she lives, which does have an IMAX screen there. Now, believe it or not, I had never been to see a film in an IMAX before. And while we were trying to work out what to do, we decided the cinema could be a good option. But then it was a case of trying to work out what film to see. Now, sadly, none of the films that were showing met my general criteria that I've explained for trying to get me to see a film. The film that was being shown on the IMAX screen was Oppenheimer. It's a film that obviously has received a lot of publicity. It has a very good cast and a fantastic director, even though it is over three hours long which I did know before I agreed to go and see it. Because we like to do things properly, we went for a meal first before we went to the cinema. Next door, there's a Prezzo, which is fully Celiac UK accredited, and I can eat there happily and healthily, and there's quite a few options. So we had a meal in there first and then went straight next door to the cinema. We just had a three-course meal in the restaurant. So even though it was a long film we were going to see, initially I was like, oh, and I probably don't need any snacks, I was reluctant to take any water in as, between me and you, I've not got the greatest bladder in the world and I figured watching a film for that long and ideally not having to nip out and miss any, best not have any liquid. However, I did take some water in in the end and then right at the last minute I saw some gluten-free popcorn so I thought I'd better grab that. As it turned out, the film was absolutely brilliant, I thought. As I said, the cast list a great everyone in that film is brilliant it's very cleverly put together directed very very well i love the way it was cut together and the story explained and obviously the special effects at certain parts in the film without wanting to give too much away if you haven't seen it were very spectacular in the imax screen in fact the best review i can probably give oppenheimer is it was over three hours long And it kept my attention from start to finish the whole way through, which, with my attention span, is quite some achievement. In fact, it was so good and so enthralling, or I was still very full from my meal, I didn't even touch my popcorn until we got home. I did sip the water slowly throughout to try and keep myself just the right side of hydrated without filling myself with too much water that I'd need to go to the facilities. As it turned out, all worked a treat. Thoroughly enjoyed the film. Although I have seen it now and sat through the whole thing, so I never have to see it again. But it was enjoyable. I'm glad I saw it. And yeah, do you know what? It probably was worth all the hype. It is good. Even though, of course, the subject matter is in a way relatively depressing. But ultimately, spoiler alert, it did not totally destroy the world. So we're kind of good. We went and saw Oppenheimer over the bank holiday weekend at the end of August. That took care of the Saturday. On the Sunday, we didn't do that much. We took it easy. But my girlfriend, as I've mentioned before, is a very good cook. She has 
so many cookbooks. Honestly, a whole bookshelf filled with cookery books, and that's still not room for all her cookery books. Plus, she often looks at YouTube channels, Instagram, follows lots of different chefs. Her dad is from Trinidad, and through her brother, she's found this guy from Trinidad who lives in Canada, who's a chef and has got lots of great recipes traditional to Trinidad. So on the Sunday of the bank holiday weekend, she decided to create this Trinidad chicken curry meal, which did involve quite a bit of prep work and general time spent in the kitchen. Now, I always offer to help with these things because I do quite enjoy cooking and making quite intricate dishes when there's someone there to help me and tell me what to do. When I'm cooking things for myself, I cook the most straightforward, basic things. Anyway, as it happens, she's not a big fan of me helping too much, which I fully understand because I haven't got a lot of skill in that area, to be fair. So I chip in and do the odd bit, but it is 99% her work. While the food was cooking, we played a bit of Scrabble. We've been having a bit of a Scrabble tournament on and off all year. And up till recently, I was within the series quite comfortably. However, in the last couple of games, she's clawed it back and we're now neck and neck level. After she won the last game we played by just four points, we're basically the last move of the game. We are both so competitive. It was awkward for a bit as I tried to recover from the disappointment, but it didn't put us off the lovely meal in the end, which was brilliant. As it happened, food-wise, she was on a bit of a roll that bank holiday weekend. Since I was diagnosed as a celiac nearly three years ago now, because I have to follow a very strict gluten-free diet, it has kind of stopped me having any Chinese takeaways. Now, that is not to say that a lot of Chinese food isn't gluten-free, but generally the way they prep it, and they do fry and deep fry a lot, the average Chinese restaurant, and I'm not having to go at them for this, this is just the way their business model works, they tend to fry everything in the same oil. And as a celiac, I can't even risk any cross-contamination with gluten. So I can't have anything that is gluten-free if it's been cooked in the same oil, for example, as something that contains gluten. So therefore, generally, Chinese restaurants are a no-go for me. Obviously, Linda, my girlfriend, is very aware of this, mainly because if we're together and she fancies a takeaway, it'll never be a Chinese because I can't have one. As she is such a fantastic cook, though, she does have a Chinese cookbook. Of course she does. She has every cookbook in the world, I think. So on the bank holiday Monday, she made us a Chinese feast, which was amazing. And the great thing she does when she's home cooking for me, of course, is make sure she swaps out anything that contains gluten and replaces it with stuff that doesn't. For example, soy sauce, which is quite a big part of Chinese cooking, generally contains gluten unless you buy the special gluten-free one, which she does, especially for me, so I can eat all the food. It was a very foody weekend. Where else could I go where one night we're out eating Italian, the next day it's a Trinidad-inspired dish, and the day after it is Chinese food that we are eating, two-thirds of which was home-cooked and made from scratch. So I do appreciate I am very lucky on the food front. Slightly disappointingly with the August bank holiday weekend, the weather wasn't fantastic. On the Saturday night when we ended up going to the cinema, my plan was to go to the races at Windsor. Through a company called Owners Group, I own a very small amount of shares in a couple of racehorses. One is called Stage Star, who I've spoke about before he is an excellent horse. He jumps over fences. He has been on his summer break and has returned to training and will probably not race now until later this month at the earliest, more likely next month. He's a great horse and had some big wins last season, including at Cheltenham, which was absolutely brilliant. The other horse I've got a share in is Star Player. Now, he was running at Windsor on the Saturday of that bank holiday weekend which is one of the main reasons that I wanted to go. It's a lovely race course, and I've not been there for quite a while for various reasons. However, the weather wasn't very good. Thunderstorms 
and rain generally forecast. And as much as I like and enjoy the horse racing, it's a lot less fun if you're there getting soaking wet. So in the end, we decided not to go to the races. And I actually ended up watching my horses race online in Prezzo before we went to the cinema to see Oppenheimer. Sadly, he underperformed star player a little bit. We were hoping he might finish first or second and run a good race. He was the joint favourite when he went off, but it wasn't to be. So that was a little bit disappointing, but I expect he will probably make an appearance at a racetrack in the next week or two with a bit of luck. We're just hoping we can just find the right race for him, get his confidence up, and hopefully he can get his head in front soon. It is great fun, though, with the involvement you get from the owner's group. They're very good. You get a weekly email telling you the latest information on your horse. You get to apply for an owner's badge every time your horse runs in a ballot, and they do organise trips to the stables to see your horses. And it's not much money. I kind of see it as a season ticket for a horse. That's how I look at it. And it's good fun. I've been a part of them now with shares in various horses for about six or seven years. The football season is very much underway. I am a Tottenham Hotspur fan and season ticket holder. I don't often get to away games. They're generally done on a point system and the longer you've been a season ticket holder, generally you've accrued more points. And once you've done that, it can kind of enable you to get enough points to go to away games. Therefore, you build up your points. Not complaining, it's fine. The people who have been going the longest and go to the most games should have the most points, should have first say on the tickets. Haven't got an issue with that whatsoever. And also, I really haven't got the time, as much as I'd love to, to follow Spurs home and the away games. Go to every home game without fail, all good, but away would be a bit tricky anyway. However, for the Caribou Cup you actually get a higher allocation of away tickets for fans than you do in the league. Therefore, when we drew Fulham away at their place, I applied for a ticket and managed to get one to go and see our second round match. Now, part of the reason was I figured there was more tickets, I might be able to get one. And secondly, when I went to see Bruce Springsteen in the summer in Hyde Park, we got chatting to a guy from Germany who comes over to England a lot for kind of his summer holidays. He goes to football matches, he goes to concerts, he comes back and forth quite a bit because he likes London. He'd been to Fulham a few times and said how nice their stadium was in a sort of old school throwback kind of way. And I've been to all of the London stadiums pretty much, except Fulham, only one I hadn't been to. So I thought, yeah, apply for tickets, you should get one and hopefully you better get along to the game. It all worked out fine, that bit in that I got my ticket, went along to the game, and I must say, it's the nicest walk I've ever had to a football stadium. There aren't many Premier League grounds where you can walk through a park alongside the river to get to the ground. And it is a nice, compact, small ground, and they do still have the actual cottage bit of Craven Cottage still on the side and actually looking into the stadium. I think it's kind of where the director's box is still. It's certainly where Spurs fan, the comedian Michael McIntyre, was watching the game from because the away fans did spot him and were chanted his name for quite a bit at one point. Sadly, in many ways, that was the highlight. Although the weather forecast suggested it wasn't going to rain, it rained, so I got slightly damp watching the game. Not only that, but we played absolutely terribly. We were 1-0 down at half time. We were wearing our new third kit, which is an awful grey colour, on a dark and dreary night in Fulham. We could hardly see the players from the stand, so how they could see each other, I don't know. It was just a bit miserable, particularly the first half. Second half was a bit better, still got wet, but at least we got our equaliser and got back in the game. But this season, Carabao Cup matches are going straight to penalties if it's level at full time, so it's straight to penalties. And after that, it was all over. The penalty shootout very much did not go our way. So I got damp to watch us get turfed out of the Carabao Cup at the second round stage by Fulham. Bearing in mind already, we're not in any European competition this year. So maybe some of us kind of thought it might have been a good chance to have a good run in a cup competition. Maybe even get some silverware. Why not? Anyway, that wasn't to be. However, happily, the start to our Premier League season has been a bit brighter. After drawing the opening game away at Brentford, which looked quite a tough game, we've actually gone on to win the next three games in a row. And as we go into the international break, 
sit in second place in the league on goal difference, which nobody really thought could happen. We've got our new manager, Ange Postacoglu, who is doing so far a fantastic job. We have made some, I think, decent signings. James Madison, for instance, is looking fantastic, as is Mickey van der Ven. At the back, he looks like he could be a quality defender. So we've been very lucky from that point of view. Hu Min Sun has also started scoring again. And when you see that guy happy and his big infectious smile, it just makes everything right with the world. So as a Spurs fan, while we're into the international break, I'm pretty happy. I'm looking forward to seeing them again in Premier League action next Saturday at home against Sheffield United, a team I weirdly have a few shares in. I'll tell you briefly how that come about. About 20-odd years ago now, a friend of mine decided that although Sheffield United were in the old second division, that, at that point, there was a very good chance they'd get promoted to the first division. We should buy some shares, and then when they get promoted, we'll make lots of money on our shares, and everything will be right. Now, it's the first and last time I've ever taken financial advice from this guy, and as it turns out, we still have those shares. I don't think they're even worth the money that we bought them for in the first place. We're just holding on to them for sentimental reasons. But we'll be 100% supporting Tottenham in that game. Make no mistake there. This does seem to have been a very good food orientated edition this time round because I've been lucky enough to have a lot of good food. And that very much continued last weekend. There's a restaurant in Berkhamsted called Tabur which was actually the restaurant me and my girlfriend went to on our second date, which was kind of our first proper date, the first time we'd been out for dinner together. She booked it. She found it. We met there. We had a fantastic meal there. We tend to go and eat there every year on the anniversary of our first date. So it's kind of a bit of a special place for us. Anyway, the other weekend, she discovered that they were going to close for a bit for refurbishments. They're going to add in a cocktail bar and make a few changes. And literally last weekend was the last weekend that you could go and eat there before it closed. When I found that out, I thought, well, we've got to eat there at least one more time. Exactly how it was when we first went in there and had that first meal together. So we went along and it is always brilliant in there. We had to book a table relatively early. Six o'clock was the only slot we could get. But the staff are so good in there. They're so friendly and efficient and they're very good with me and my celiac disease. They do seem to have a lot of celiacs who eat in there. The nature of the food, it's a Turkish meze restaurant. So a lot of the food is naturally gluten-free anyway. Most of the gluten within the meals comes from the bread, which they can swap out and replace with gluten-free bread, which is fantastic from my point of view. So I always feel happy and safe eating in there and never have had any problems. Add to that, the food is at absolutely amazing you could do it in a couple of different ways they have like these small plate dishes so you can have lots of small plates like tapas and share them between you or they do have larger plate options you could just have a main meal from that point of view with starters and sides and also of course they have desserts as well when we've been in there in the past, maybe because we've eaten a bit later, we have made the mistake of ordering sometimes a little too much. But that is kind of their fault because the food is just so good. You want to try a little bit of everything. This time, however, we were a little bit more sensible, a tiny bit more reserved. So we ordered, as it turned out, exactly the right amount of food. I mean, obviously, we started off with the cheese fondue for starter, which was great. They do this baked aubergine dish, which is amazing. And then there's a tuna tartare dish, which is just exceptional. In fact, the whole thing is fantastic. They've also got a restaurant in St Albans as well, Tabure, and it's well worth going to. It's a great dining experience. The food's fantastic. As I said, the staff look after you fantastically well. When it reopens, we will definitely be going back there without a shadow of a doubt. The other thing that Linda and I did on that first main date, our second date, we actually, as it happened, ate early at Tabua that night. And then we ended up going to a pub a couple of doors down 
and ended up staying there, drinking and chatting until about 1am when we got kicked out. Therefore, after we've been to the restaurant once again this time, we did go to the King's Arms for a drink before we went home, just for old time's sake. So thoroughly enjoyable evening. This does sound like quite a boast, but I am very lucky in that I do have lots of friends and they're spread over the country, different places, in different industries, doing different things. So sadly, it is hard to catch up with them as often as I'd like to in the busy world that we all seem to live in nowadays. But last Sunday, I did manage to go and see a mate of mine who has been my friend for nearly 20 years now. We met at a radio station down in Somerset when I started doing some freelance work down there and they were already working there. And then ultimately they decided to leave and to cut a long story short, I basically got their job. But there was a bit of a interim period for a couple of months where we were both working together there. We got on really well, great friends ever since that point, but don't catch up probably as often as we'd like or we should. So I went over and saw them on the Sunday afternoon, which happened to be a glorious, warm, sunny day. I'd almost forgotten what they were like. Now, the plan, I thought, was to go to their house first and then we were going to head out and maybe get some food, possibly go for a walk around some of the parks near to where they live. But as it turned out, the cricket team that they play for were playing a crucial match which could lead to them getting promotion to the next division up. And that was happening at a park about five minutes away from their flat. They are a big cricket fan. We went to watch that. Now, I haven't really sat and watched a cricket match for quite some time, it's fair to say. But it was a glorious day and I really enjoyed it. It gave us a chance to watch the game and just have a really good chat and catch up in the sunshine, which, as it turned out, was absolutely perfect. Haven't played much cricket myself. I ended up making up the numbers once for the school team and I batted 11, didn't bowl and just stood in the field right by the boundary and hoped the ball never came to me, which was fine. The only other time I've ever played in a proper, in inverted commas, cricket match was when I was working at the radio station down in Yeovil. I ended up in a celebrity cricket match somehow with Hugh Fernley Whittenstall one of the local MPs, a bishop and some former West Indian cricketers. It's quite the collection, to be fair. I mean, I was very much there just making up the numbers. Once again, I batted, I didn't bowl and I generally stayed out of the way. It was good fun, though. And during tea, me and Hugh did have a nice little chat over some scones, which was very civilised. But I haven't got a great cricketing pedigree, it's fair to say. However, I did enjoy the game and it was nice to catch up with my mate and their team won as well, so it meant they clinched promotion. So it was all very good. After the cricket, we did go for a walk around some of the lakes near to where they live as well, which was very good. It was just perfect end to a sunny Sunday. So that was great. So the plan, as always, for me is try to catch up with more of my mates more often. Not exactly sure how I'm going to achieve that, but that's very much... The dream, I think. Got quite a busy and exciting couple of weeks coming up with some exciting things booked in the diary that I've not done before. Obviously, I'll tell you all about them next time we speak, but that is just about it for now. Just a reminder that you can hear my radio show Saturday afternoons between 2 and 4 at Radio9Springs.com. That is it. Thanks for listening. Look after yourselves and each other, please. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.